far as many Nigerians are concerned, the 2023 elections, uh, they've started already, even though ballots are not being cast, but then uh, events are unfolding, conventions are being held, primaries to start to uh, really reveal who the candidates, uh, the parties would be, fair, you know, uh, really filled in in 2023 would be. And so uh, the, the die is cast for a lot of Nigerians who are paying attention to the politics. So this morning we still continue with the drive towards 2023 general elections. And now we want to take a look at the real issues. Join us this morning is a civil rights activist and someone whose voice is always very loud when it comes to Nigeria all the time. So nice to have you again, Obunabo in Kotaria. Sure. It's so nice to see you again. <laughs> am, I, with... am I always loud? It's a pleasure to see your pretty face. Thank you. Same. So nice to have you on the program again. And, and you know, we love to talk. It's amazing how we enjoy talking about the country, not because we just want to talk, but because we feel that they, we could change the things that many Nigerians want changed at this point in time. And so the general elections are around the corner. It seems as if the political parties, the ones that are major, the ones that are very active, uh, they found their voices. So if you want to take a look at the polity at this point in time, what would you say? Well, so you're quite right. Uh, the political hustles have started. Uh, the engine revs up. Um, activities, of course, approaching the crescendo. You know, we're approaching the current. So the parties are jostling for votes, for people, candidates as well, that can also ensure it at the uh, forthcoming general elections. But right, you rightly said, uh, it's like uh, what I refer to as uh, a ritual every four, four years. So there is nothing new other than the this time around, if you give, if you consider the overheated political engine, a steadily inflammatory social climate and highly economic atmosphere, the clamor is louder. Uh, Nigerians are frustrated as a result of. Um, cataclysmic leadership, bad leadership, so to speak, not so to speak. And so Nigerians want somebody that will be there in their own image, persons that will be there to address and correct the anomalies of the society that has created uh, a lot of, um, how would I put it, dividend and loss of hope country called Nigeria. Nigeria, as we speak now, is a classical example. The late Martin Luther King described as hopes have been dashed, uh, dreams shattered, and promise of a brighter future shipwrecked. You know, so Nigeria. And the problem now will be who will be that leader. Sadly, you know, those that are going to join for are those that have the financial chest, and so. Uh, the ordinary person, or the plebeian, likes it or not, he doesn't have the one person to buy the forms. We don't have the issue of independent candidacy. He doesn't have the money to buy the forms. Even those that have the money to buy the forms, we saw what happened recently in the APC, where you will have into uh, accepting a consensus candidate. So even with your money to buy the forms, you might be denied the right to fly the flag of the political party the way you're competent. And so who will be that person that will be there in the image of Nigerian economy? And we have a problem because it's like Jesus said in the Bible, rich will get rich and the poor will get poorer. That is a simple example of what the how I would describe the political situation right now in the country. We have the credible persons, but the credible person will not be allowed they will never be allowed because the corrupt ones will forever want to ensure that they cover their corruption and even when they are out of office, they ensure that those that will come up to cover, make a, a, protect them, insulate them from prosecution, cover up their solid deeds are the ones that will succeed. That is where it is today. And when those ones come up, the ones that are their leaders who hope to succeed them will forever also grovel before them and tell them whatever they are doing is right. And that is the bane of the Tuareg administration as we speak. Yeah, no minister, look at what happened to the imam. 
the man came up, condemned the federal government, and his condemnation was, I call, I, 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 I say, man, an upright, a man of rectitude, and a man, for that matter, who could speak against uh, what is going on in the country, the ineptitude in the country, headed by his fellow Muslim uh, 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 leader. He condemned it, and look at what happened. True. He was even banned. He was not just criticized. He was banned. Now, if such an imam is being killed today, you can imagine the uproar it will stimulate in the society. What I'm trying to say is nothing that this is the kind of country we live in. Blind followership. Nobody is interested in whether Mr. A is doing right or Mr. B is doing wrong. People are interested in who is the man there? Is he going to be my godfather? Am I going to benefit from him? you this, so I can vote for an APC governor in River State and a PDP government president in I can vote for a PDP governor in River State and an APC president in federal level. I don't give a damn about the party anymore. I am not interested in the party. I'm more interested in the quality of the candidate. What can he offer? And that should be the thinking of Nigeria and not embezzling his followership. This whole issue of I'm a PDP member, I must go to a PDP member. End of the day, we are all going to suffer for this. When this man ascends, both the APC, PP, YPP, WC, all parties will be will be will, 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 will pay for his, his ineptitude, his, his bad governor. So we should not, we should go beyond party lines. After all, nobody is going to be secret ballot. Nobody is going to know who you voted for. Let us go beyond party lines. And vote for credible persons if we don't want an extinction of this country because we are headed slowly but steadily or touch up with a rendezvous with extinction. I'm not talking of anarchy, anarchy is enthroned already. I'm talking of extinction. So, if we want this country to continue, if we want the existence, because that is the only way you can show love. You get up in the morning, you say Nigeria cannot be divided, but it's already divided. It's already divided. What is left is for us to go our separate way. If it's a division, it is obvious. Divisions on the wall are white, white, white. It can swallow an elephant. So what other division, what other division are you talking about? All right. What part is for Nigeria right. to, right to put up all. ensure that they vote the right person and not the party? Because APC is PDP. PDP right. is APC. Take it or leave it. Right, right to put up all. So right. vote for the right person and not the party. Absolutely. On, 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 as divisive as the discussion uh, can be sometimes, uh, the division, unfortunately, isn't even along um, ethnic or religious lines. It's division al along poverty, the rich versus the poor. I cannot imagine a situation where the rich will go to one point and the other poor to another point, which, interestingly, are some of the real issues. So while we mull and ponder over the candidates, who will they be, whether it's be PDP or APC, or whether they be Muslim or Christian or from whatever ethnic group. If you go on the streets and you hear what people have to say, even from the phone calls we get during the review of the papers, headlines, you hear insecurity, you hear the economy, over and over again how it affects them. With insecurity, since I know you have a background in uh, criminology also too, will you say that we've been able to rightly diagnose the problem when it comes to insecurity um, as a people and as leadership. Oh yes, I can tell you authoritatively we have just we have diagnosed it and we have seen of what the issues are. Anybody who tells you he's not is only lying. The authorities are well aware of what these issues are. But it goes it goes beyond diagnosis. You know, it has to do with the willingness, and that is the problem we are having here. It has to do with willingness. It has to do with complicity. Now, I give you a very good example where willingness and complicity. Let me uh, uh, jump your brain a little. You remember when the president ordered the former inspector general of police to relocate to was it Kano Oscar? When the crisis there got to its climax, as it has not abated, anyway, when it got to its climax, and few months later, the president went to that venue and was told that the IG never slept there for one day. 
that is in subordination. Because the IG belongs to the paramilitary force. That is in subordination. And, and you don't treat such offenses with levy. What did Mr. President say? I will find out why when I get to Abuja. He got to Abuja and nothing happened until the IG retired. Not even the courtesy of explaining to Nigerians why the IG flouted his order. Not even that courtesy. To hell with Nigerians, I owe you no apology, I owe you next explanation. Now let's go to the issue. There are successors came on air to say, look, so much was voted for arms and ammunition. We cannot see what the money voted for was used for. Nothing to show for it. Nothing to justify that allocation. The NSA corroborated that, that, that story. NSA, who is still serving, corroborated that story. What happened? They were rewarded for stealing money. Because if you cannot have I can't put it is now you cannot say we are there, you cannot say the truth is their successor said it, it's on record. The NSA said it, addressing the press conference is on record. They were rewarded for stealing money with a particular account. They gave you money to go and swear insurgency. They gave you money to go and contain the uprising. They gave you money to go and contain the terrorists. You did not use that money to have the arms and ammunition you are supposed to use to contain them. Are you not complicit? You are complicit. Now, because you encourage it. Now, Mr. President, I uh, took that the box stop, also broke it. He did not just stop there. He also rewarded you. That, we know. We know what the problems are. The diagnosis are clear, quite explicit. Quite explicit. Next to address the issue. And you get up in the morning, you mouth piles around at the middle of the day, you do all kinds of threats. So those are not enough. But if one evil man should kill one soul, they, they invade that area. The facts are there. It's not a global saying it. They, they invade. It is after we plan up and share what is happening in the north that they will send troops. Then after one or two cosmetic approach, they come back. Every money. Supplementary budget money. What is happening to you? So we know what this problem is. We talk of diagnosis. We are quite aware of what the problem is. It has nothing to do with diagnosis. It has to do with the willingness to come to address it. That is the problem we have in this country. Uh, I mean, um... <laughs> So many issues that many Nigerians uh, from different quarters are bringing to the fore at this point in time, and you cannot wish any of them aside. And that's the reason why we're bringing uh, out the contentious issues at this point in time. Uh, we talk about politicians, we talk about the politics itself, we talk about uh, the electoral body and the government in place, and of course the electorates as we try to find a solution to uh, solutions around because so many problems there. Oh, but now, but let's, let's now talk about uh, your view of the present uh, day politician and political party. I'm using present day because we want to take them one after the other. There's no how as a nation that we can go into elections without uh, going through the political parties. Have we grown since 1999? Have, any, have things changed as you would have wished for? And what are those things? Sincerely, I mean, what are those things that have changed uh, positively? Will, yes. And what are those things that we will, need to I, fix? I, I, uh, I, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Yes. I could sense your, your frustration from your tone. I could sense your frustration, no doubt about that. And so we got, it, we got it right in 1999 when people instituted the transition process. And those who felt they had refugees stayed away in order not to be dragged into the murky waters in quotes of politics. And so we had characters with distorted perception of life, then finally discharged onto the political side. And unfortunately, those are the same characters that, that are not free. You cannot bequeath a society what you don't have. Just for example, I come to you to say, the way. You presented your news yesterday. I don't like it. 
is either you try to let me know that in broadcast journalism, that is how news is, news stories are presented, or you tell me, oh, sorry, uh, I, I wasn't in my good mood and so forth. But rather than do that, I'm using this as a very good example. Rather than do that, you now tell me, oh, 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 look at you, you are an idiot. Uh, look at it, you are wearing. Uh, after all, yesterday I gave you food to eat. You digress. And why, why are you you are attacking my person because that is your level, this intellectual constipation. That is your level of reasoning, and that reflects on every aspect of your life. When you have a leader that is impervious to criticisms, when you have a leader that thinks it's King Solomon, even Solomon, when you have such leaders that believe that everybody must grow better because they have the finances, then you have a problem. And that is the thinking of our leaders. And that is why once they get there, even the electorate, and most times they those that will never challenge them. Those that will always tell them, we think we we'll slap your father. What you did is right. After all, my father was wrong. When you have such leaders and then it goes, what do you expect? What do you expect? Yes, what do you, you should expect the worst. If you talk of the political parties, and I, I can tell you that the Nigerian parties have been wrecked of ideologies. Like APC, for example. APC is a melding of political parties with the principal aim of ousting the unity. That the APC had an ideology. No ideology. The PDP is the PDP of today. The PDP of yesterday, pre 1999. Okay. But those that formed the party, the founding father. Of course, they were intelligent, reasonable, respected Nigerians. But after that, how many of them, how many are emerged as leaders? I'm talking about the life. Those founding fathers have been pushed the way. Some are dead. Today, we have even so called leaders, governors, and so on, condemning the family. If you are a founding father, so what? Now, the PDP of today has no ideology. What the PDP wants is what? To win power. We have to be in office. You can hardly find a person today addressing the salient issues. Rather, they tell you, we will take over power by social side. We must take over power by social side. Oh, the, and this is that. The, what are the solutions? Like you have in the shadow, when you have the shadow government in civilized life, what are the solutions? Tell me what are your solutions? What is the kind of share you're coming with? What is different from A and B? What is A B that you tend to correct? After all, you were not for a few years or thereabouts. What happened? 18 years or thereabouts. What happened? I've had Today we are condemning the APC because if you just suppose the PDP is better than the APC. Not that the PDP felt, did extremely well. Not that the PDP, if the PDP had done extremely well, Nigeria would have sought for change. So that is why I'm telling you that it should not be about the party. Honestly, to that Supreme Court judgment that you vote for a party and not for an individual. Because, so if you're a PDP today, and uh, another person is in APC, and I'm to you, and I am a member of YPP. So, because of my relationship with you, so I did not vote for PDP. I voted for Shem. That is a fact. That is the truth. So, when you say you vote for PDP, uh, therefore, uh, this is rubbish. I, I completely disagree, but it is a law, but I completely disagree. We vote for individuals. Here today, a leader moves from. Look at what happened in, in, in their body. Someone defended. How many people defended with the doctor? They vote for individuals and not parties. It's the truth about it. But well, that is the law. In the wisdom of the court, the court says, no, you vote for party. That is okay. No problem. But that is why I'm calling on Nigerians. If not parties, vote for the individuals. Let us vote in those that address the problems of this country. Genuinely. Look at the year as well. Yeah, those from the north. But year as well is the one. Who brought shock to the Nigerian? That's what we're talking about. We're not being better than parties. 
not just vote for individuals this time around. If you're a citizen that votes for PDP, a candidate that I think is credible, APC candidate that I think is credible, of office, look, let me tell you, I will vote for APC, PDP, Why? Why PDP, WL, it depends. House of Assembly, I know who to vote for. House of Press, I know who to vote for. Senate, I know who to vote for. That is the way we can address this issue. And let us about this imbecilic idea of I belong to a party and I must vote for that party. Then at the end of the day, you start crying, you start condemning the government when you are responsible. The time you had to change it, you refuse to change it. So you shut up and don't complain anymore. Uh, Punabo, as we bring the discussion to a close, and I, I think as you focused a lot on the All Progressives Congress, interestingly, the People's Democratic Party uh, has its own major issue in deciding where it wants its hat um, to go, especially around zoning. And it, before now, you had the, the governor of River State holding on to the reins of um, whatever happened to the PDP from uh, the governorship elections in different states like those states, you know, they say running things basically. He's also thrown his hat into the ring to an interesting character, colorful. What are your thoughts? Sorry, please summarize it. This breaking, could you just summarize it? Just in summary, so that I can answer that question. Yes. So I said the People's Democratic Party has its own uh, wahala to deal with. They're talking about zoning also, too. And interestingly, the governor of River State. Uh, who for a number of uh, years now has held on to the reins of the control of the party, has thrown his hat in the ring and wants to be uh, president in 2023. Well, what are your thoughts? That would be a match of terror, conquest, and subjugation. A man that is citizen, but is quick at criticizing others. That is the problem we're having today in the country. What will happen to them? Yeah. The truth about it is that, okay, he's been criticized. Oh, he wasn't even criticized. You look at the uh, adjusted government where the deputy governor came on board. He was addressing PDP delegates in the adjusted. He wasn't referring to anybody. And the governor took on the job. The same them as common. That is not gubernatorial in any way. It doesn't, it, 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 but would, would, does that depict presidential? Then the next thing you said, you have uh, uh, a So if you assist me or sponsor to sleep with my wife, that you sponsored my wedding, or read my private. If anybody comes to River State to dictate what happens in PDP in River State, will the governor broke it? See, that is the issue of every kind of leadership I'm talking about. The man says these are problems I'm facing, and it is said that the governors are heads of the party in their various state, and the president the head of the party. And his expression is misgiving. If you have a views and you don't have an ulterior motive, you will invite them to a meeting. Not because you are sitting, look, we all go, I go for our sisters. You also go for our sisters as a whole. We all go for Assisted you, I should shut up. You should shut up. Assisted you, I now tell the world I assisted you. It's not so depressing. It's not proper. That you should, you have you shut my wedding, therefore you should you come and speak with my wife. Or you should rape my privacy. Anybody now, you come and open the door, I must enter. No, it's not possible. That is not done. You see, that's what you're talking about. When you talk of you, you engage on issues. All right. The issue of whether you can kind of white people is become completely unnecessary. The man is talking of PDP in uh, address that issue. And don't right. attack the person. These All are right. the issues you are talking about. That is the point that you are making. So we digress. All right, people are saying the nation, so much insecurity in the nation. You say, okay, so much insecurity. Rather than I say, no, this is protected. You say, oh, why? All right, open up. You are an idiot. That's like what they don't do in all right. I mean, and it's so interesting because you served as a commissioner in that, uh, under the administration, I want to believe, all right? And that you work closely with, uh, with, 
You said you slept closely with uh, Governor Wiki, and it's so surprising that uh, I would have, one would have imagined that you should be one of his supporters, but all of this submission now, well, politics is what it is, and I'm sure that in days and months to come, we, we get a clearer picture of what would happen. Um, PDP is here to hold uh, their primary to really say this person that will be flying the flag, uh, Dito, APC, and other political parties, but we'll see what uh, the days and months to come will hold for us as a nation. Obunavo in Kotaria, we thank you so much for being part of the program today. Uh, we know we just crashed this on the, on the surface. We'll bring you back to talk more on the Nigerian politics in, in a very short while, in a very short moment. Thank you so much. All right, uh, we couldn't hear you that. We want to thank you so much for being part of the program. We're still taking a look at things that happen in the country, especially the politics as 2023 uh, draws nearer. It's never been nearer. No other year has been as close in the fourth month of the preceding year than 2023 has been uh, to many people that are looking forward to the general elections come next year. We'll take the next break. When we come back, we'll still be taking a look at who should be Nigeria's next CEO come 2023 the reason we're saying ceo is that person will be able to run this country as a profitable venture from 2023 uh, moving forward after this break just stay with us <laughs> 